the years of having our living standards decrease while the wealthiest 1% have had it better than ever, I think it's time for maybe, I don't know, some participation in our democracy. Or, we have our own problem. We don't need to be in the Middle East. We don't need to invade a new country every year to sell more weapons. Do you know someone who has suffered a job loss or repeated financial struggle in the past decade? Has the recent Occupy Wall Street movement grabbed your attention? How are Occupy Wall Street, the American financial system, and the field of ecological economics all connected? Well, let's begin here. The Gund Institute for Ecological Economics at the University of Vermont is a leading transdisciplinary research, teaching, and service organization that for 30 years has been focused on developing integrative solutions to society's most pressing problems. In the tradition of the teach-ins that swept the nation's colleges and universities in 1965, an event was organized to not only redefine today's problems, but also to provide potential solutions for many of the grievances raised by the Occupy Wall Street protests. On October 24, 2011, the Gund Institute utilized multimedia communications and public outreach processes to introduce their solutions for economic stability into the public discourse. Here is their story. This afternoon is not a protest, not a strike, not an act of civil disobedience. This is the beginning of a teach-in. In, in, in many ways, the Gun Institute's teach-in was 10 or 15 years in the making. When looking back over the past few decades of American history, one might notice that the last time there were mass demonstrations of popular protests due to economic injustice was with the anti-globalization protests in Seattle of 1999. In recent years, it was only with the crash of 2008, the subsequent bank bailouts, and the resulting global economic crisis, when mass attention to our economic system had been reawakened. Then, in 2011, an eruption occurred. Suddenly, the status quo of our political systems were being rejected on a global scale. Here in the U.S., this kind of intense political fervor first touched ground in Madison, Wisconsin, when proposed legislation attempted to fill an expected $3.6 billion budget deficit with a series of strategic attacks against worker rights in the public sector. Soon after, protests spread nationwide after the Occupy Wall Street movement received global attention for voicing shared concerns and anxieties that had been plaguing the public for years. At the forefront of their grievances were issues regarding economic injustice and the political maneuvers that had made these injustices commonplace. This strong global uprising was giving a face and a voice to the people victimized by the systematic socioeconomic injustices caused by years of political and corporate corruption. On a larger scale than ever seen before, people were realizing that our current economic policies weren't working, and they were starting to look for solutions. What this meant for the Gun Institute was that many of the problems identified by ecological economics in the past were suddenly at the forefront of public concern. Thoughts began to flow at weekly meetings about how the national socioeconomic and political uproar could benefit from solutions developed by the Gund if they were easily shared within the public discourse. In less than a month's time, the Gund community had pulled together a collection of 15 Gund students, fellows, and experts in the field of ecological economics to deliver a series of five-minute public talks on topics concerning macroeconomic policy reform. The topics ranged from job and income inequality to corporate personhood to financial speculation sales tax and attempted to answer the questions of, how did we get into this situation of economic misery? How can we solve the current economic crisis? And how can we ensure that our solutions will lead to a sustainable, high quality of life for this and future generations? As stated plainly and poignantly in the words of civil rights activist Bayard Rustin, the proof that one truly believes is in action. The Gund Institute embodied this 
by taking direct action to propose their solutions and introduce them into the public realm. We agree, challenges exist, but so too do solutions. The problem is that corporations have undue influence over our government, just as the church did until 300 years ago. We founded our nation on the principle of the separation of church and state. Now we need to amend our constitution to put in place the separation of the corporation and state. I hope the book becomes the manifesto of the Occupy Wall Street movement because what they're really calling for with all of their protests, even though I don't think they know it, is monetary democracy. That's what we need, monetary democracy, because without it, our democracy is meaningless. We have, we have to create an economy that focuses on the real problems, on misery, poverty, unemployment. We have to create a shared prosperity on a finite planet and design an economic system capable of doing that. Uh, but the point that I want to make to you is the following, that inequality, as this crisis has shown, is unsustainable. We risk our economic futures if we fail to support children in their vulnerable years and the parents who care for them. Promoting equality, especially through jobs creation, is not only the fair thing to do, it is smart economics. We need Thank to you. reframe the conversation to be about shared prosperity and improving well-being rather than driving up flawed economic indicators. Our indicators must reflect the core values of our citizens and the goals that we share. We need taxation to convey ecological costs and to stimulate creative responses, along with reduced taxes and rebates to soften the impact of the transition. That is a fair way to help prices tell the ecological truth. We are currently de-investing in things like our environment and education. But studies have shown that the single most important factor in determining the affluence of a country is the investment that country puts into education. We must have the foresight to say that there are things we need to invest in for our future. This country was founded on the concepts of equal opportunity. By investing in public goods, we are returning to our core value of equal opportunity for all. Anytime I go to the store to buy something here in Vermont, I pay a 6% sales tax. So I don't see why financial traders on Wall Street don't have to pay for the financial instruments that they buy. That's right. This small tax would have the effect of slowing down the high volume, high speed transactions that don't actually add value to our economy. This will create in incentives for investors to put their money into long-term investments that actually strengthen our economy and create jobs. Protesters in New York and around the world have made it clear that we cannot have healthy communities without, as a community, being able to exercise control over our own economy. Thank you. The final result was a massive success, with over 300 individuals and attendees, and write-ups in the Burlington Free Press and other online publications. Intentions for future public teachings are in the works, and to find out more, or join the conversation, check out Beyond on Facebook or YouTube.